Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Now, seeing as we're celebrating Let's Dev this whole month, I thought I'd take this opportunity to try something more uh, basic. Something I've always wanted to try, but never had the motivation. But I'd say a month dedicated to Let's Dev is a perfect time to try it. So, let's make a Brick Breaker game, but go crazy with it. That's right, one of the oldest tutorials that I can remember coming with Game Maker was uh, the Brick Breaker game. And yet, I've never once attempted to try it out for myself. So, we'll be keeping with tradition by making our own Brick Breaker game, but our own way. So today's plan is to build the basics for a Brick Breaker-like game that includes the player, ball and bricks, and their features. We'll also touch on some of our own added features just to get a taste for what we can accomplish in the future. So let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First up, we needed a few sprites. We needed a paddle for the player to control, so I guess a bar stool is what we're going with. Next, I drew a little yellow ball that we'd be tossing around. And finally, we needed the bricks we'd be breaking. And don't worry, it may look a little pale and gray right now, but it'll get its color later. The player code was up first. I tied the X position of the player to the mouse and restricted the Y position to the bottom of the screen. So far so good, so I moved on to the ball. I gave the ball a starting direction of up and a slow speed to start with. I then added our first bit of bounce to the ball in order to keep them in the play area. For now, the ball would simply do a 180 whenever it hit an edge. And finally, I added the player to that check to compound the different conditions that bounce our balls. Now yes, I'm aware that our checks aren't taking into consideration speed, which bugs the balls out sometimes, but generally speaking, things were working as they should, and it was good enough for the time being. So being full of myself, I wanted to start adding some extra flavor to our game. Indeed, before we've even got the basics done, I'm jumping ahead. What can I say? The heart wants what the heart wants. I've always been interested in implementing a bullet time style slowdown in one of my games, and this seemed like the perfect project to try it with. So I added a global variable that would act as our general global speed. I then changed the ball speed to a variable multiplied by that general global speed, which is obviously at 1 by default. Finally, for testing purposes, I had the global speed halved by holding down spacebar. And thankfully, this little diversion ended up working, so we now had a simple time control feature under our belt. Now it was time to return to the basics. I wanted to spice up our ball bounces, so I tried using GameMaker's angle difference to make things more strategic. You know, so hitting the ball at a certain angle would generate a more realistic bounce. Unfortunately, I couldn't exactly grasp the proper way to utilize it, so instead of obsessing over such specifics this early, I decided to move on to the bricks. As I said at the start, our bricks were gonna get colored, but we'd handle it through code, and that's exactly what I did. On spawn, I had the bricks choose from a handful of colors and blended them. From there, it was business as usual. I treated the bricks like enemies and used the same code we've used in previous projects to keep track of health and what to do when hit by the ball. I then decided to just go with a general random shift in direction for bounces, and also added a flash effect to the bricks to give them some visual feedback when being hit. Next, and you know I had to do it, I added some screen shake to any time the ball ricocheted off a surface. And to add a little more impact to our bricks breaking, I added a simple superficial explosion effect. So there we had it, our first few steps into making our own Brick Breaker game. Not too crazy yet, but we are just getting started. We've definitely got some bugs to squash, but overall it's a pretty solid start to what could be a pretty great experiment. So before we end today's episode, I'm curious, what kind of crazy stuff should we add to this thing? Bosses? Laser beams? A Kraken? Let me know in the comments section below. I'll do my own brainstorming and we'll see what crazy things we can add next. But for now, remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts and our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.